Let's have a look at another example of differentiating a square root. So we want to differentiate the square root of x cubed. So I'm going to start off by writing f of x is equal to the square root of x cubed. We have our rules for differentiating over here. Here's our f of x values and when we differentiate say x to the power of n we get nx to the power of n minus 1. When we differentiate ax to the power of n we get n times a x to the power of n minus 1. And when we differentiate a constant, let's say c, we get 0. So there's no square roots over here in the f of x section. So there's no rule over here to tell us what happens when we differentiate a square root. But we know that the square root of x can be written as x to the power of a half. So if we have the square root of x, that's the same as writing x to the power of a half. So we're going to use that. So when we have the square root of x cubed, Another way to write that would be, so we have f of x is equal to, well, it's just x cubed all to the power of a half. Which, so x cubed to the power of a half just means the square root of x cubed. Now we can use the rules of indices. Well, I've got three and a half here. So the rule of indices that we're going to use says that if I've got a to the power of m, say, all raised to the power of n, that's the same as a to the power of m times n. So if I've got x cubed to the power of a half, that's the same as, so you have f of x is equal to, I can just multiply three by half, so I get x to the power of three over two. So another way to write the square root of x cubed is x to the power of three over two. We can go backwards here if we ever need to, and that's important to know as well. Now, we haven't differentiated yet, we've just written this in a different way. And the reason that we wrote it in a different way is because now we can use this rule over here. We've got x to the power of 3 over 2. We know how to differentiate x to the power of n. And in this case, n is just 3 over 2. So f dash of x, f dash of x will just equal, it's n times x to the power of n minus 1. So when n this time is 3 over 2, so it's just going to be 3 over 2 x to the power of 3 over 2 minus 1. We can tidy that up a little bit. We get 3 over 2 x and then 3 over 2 minus 1 gives us 1 over 2. So we've got 3 over 2 x to the power of a half. If you want to tidy that up a little bit, not, not really tidy it up, but write it in a different way, we know that x to the power of a half is the square root of x. So I could write, if I want, 3 over 2 multiplied by the square root of x. So depending on which notation uh, you like.